Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the Paleocene, as early placentals were diversifying rapidly, certain lineages began to specialise into carnivorous niches. We have discussed the predatory Mesonychian ungulates before, but the dominant Laurasiotherian hunters of the time were the Creodont. These mammals were members of the clade Ferrae, and were close relatives of both modern carnivorans and, more surprisingly, the pangolins. This relationship has been proven by DNA and protein sequencing analyses, alongside a few shared anatomical traits, including a fused scaphoid and lunate bones of the wrist. The common ancestor of all Ferraeans was likely a generalised arboreal omnivore, similar to modern civets or the extinct Paleocene mammal Triacus. While the ancestors of pangolins and their extinct cousins became increasingly adapted for a specialised insectivorous lifestyle, all other groups of Ferraeans developed into more omnivorous or purely carnivorous niches. This broader clade came to be defined as Pan Carnivora, and included both carnivorans and the creodonts, more basal meat-eating mammals that thrived during the Paleogene. These creodonts were divided into two families, the vaguely dog-like hyenodonts and the more cat and mustelid-like oxyenids. The former are quite well-known features of Cenozoic mammal faunas, including famous massive apex carnivores such as Simba Kubwa and Hyenodon Gigas. However, the subject of today's video, the oxyenids, are altogether more poorly known animals. This may be due to the relative obscurity of many paleogene mammal groups and their significantly earlier date of extinction than the hyenodonts. Indeed, oxyenids were creatures of the Paleocene and Eocene periods, inhabiting the tropical and subtropical forests that covered much of the northern hemisphere at the time. While the hyenodonts persisted into the Miocene, the oxyenids vanished before the end of the Eocene. The first members of the group appeared during the Middle Paleocene in North America, and were already carnivores roughly the size of a large domestic cat. By the early Eocene, oxyenids spread into Eurasia by crossing the Greenland and Beringian continental bridges. Overall, members of the group were superficially cat-like mammals that walked in a plantigrade manner, with the sole of the foot touching the ground. Their skulls were proportionally large and heavily built, with teeth somewhat reminiscent of those of hyenas, adapted for crushing rather than the shearing blade-like molars of the hyenodonts. Most genera were capable climbers, with low-slung bodies and long counterbalancing tails. Interestingly, recent studies carried out in the 2010s have suggested that creodonts are not a natural grouping, with oxyunids being more basal members of pan carnivora than both hyenodonts and carnivorans, which were found to be sister taxa. Regardless of phylogenetic placement, the oldest and most basal oxyunids are animals such as Tethyena, native to North America from the Middle Paleocene to the Early Eocene. It was the smallest member of the family, weighing roughly 5 kilograms and being a generalist ambush hunter of small prey. Larger forms emerged by the end of the Paleocene, such as the genus Oxyena itself, a long-bodied animal comparable to a large wolverine in terms of size. The body, excluding the tail, measured about a metre long, with a broad, low skull equipped with powerful jaws. The limbs were short in comparison to living carnivorans, with five-toed feet suitable for climbing. Indeed, Oxyena was a rather generalised predator, with analysis of the teeth indicating an animal with a diet composed of mainly meat, supplemented with fruits, berries and possibly crustaceans. Native to Colorado and Wyoming, it would have preyed on early rodents, lizards and lemur-like primates. A close relative from the Middle Eocene was the more massive Patriophilus, meaning father cat. Also native to North America, the genus measured up to 1.8 metres long, not including the tail, and weighed between 40 and 90 kilograms, about the size of a cougar. Like the latter, Patriophilus was an ambush hunter capable of bringing down early ungulates with a swift bite to the throat or to the rear of the skull. The teeth were robust and were capable of effectively crushing bone. It was a poor runner, with short limbs and stout feet, but was likely a decent climber and swimmer. A similar genus, Paleonictus, from the late Paleocene to early Eocene of Europe and North America, possessed a somewhat hyena-like skull and would have resembled a large mustelid, probably a more dedicated scavenger than Patriophilus, 
This animal nicely demonstrates the effect of the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum on mammalian body mass. While the late Paleocene species, P. occidentalis, was the size of a small bear, early Eocene forms such as P. wingi had shrunk down to coyote size in response to a global spike in temperatures. Meanwhile, the stealthy Macaroides developed features strongly convergent with those of later saber-toothed cats and nimravids in possessing greatly enlarged canines. Native to the US state of Wyoming during the Eocene, the animal was an ambush hunt that targeted early horses and tapirs, subduing them with powerful forelimbs, sharp claws, and delivering a fatal strike to the throat with its sabre teeth. Like Nimravids, Macaroides was a plantigrade walker, but was smaller than most of these carnivorans, being no bigger than a cocker spaniel. The most massive oxyunid, and a contender in the running for my favourite prehistoric animal name, was Sarcastodon. With a name in no way relating to sarcasm, this fearsome predator dwelt in the late Eocene of Mongolia, and was the latest surviving member of the family. Only known from a well-preserved skull measuring about 50 centimetres long, this animal was once regarded as one of the largest terrestrial mammalian predators of all time, potentially weighing in at, at an astonishing 1.2 tonnes. However, this calculation was informed by an inaccurate idea of oxyunid proportions, which as mentioned above possessed disproportionately massive skulls. Modern size estimates put this animal at a much leaner 300 kilograms, still formidable considering this is equivalent to a male grizzly bear. Due to the partial nature of the animal's remains, not much can be stated about the body or limbs. Given Sarcastodon's bulk and likely plantigrade feet, it is best to reconstruct the genus as an ambush hunter of large contemporary ungulates, such as the Pantodont hypocoryphodon and the Uintothere gobiotherium. The jaws are highly robust and sturdy, equipped with slicing premolars and crushing molars that were capable of delivering deep wounds while Sarcastodon almost certainly scavenged from carcasses felled by other contemporary predators such as Andrew Sarkas. While this bear-cat-wolverine hybrid survived until the end of the Eocene, it is telling that it was the only oxyunid to do so. It was the only genus recovered from late Eocene deposits, with all other forms already extinct by the Middle Eocene. This suggests that ox unids are animals that needed the cover provided by tropical forests in order to effectively hunt prey, with the drying tendencies of the later Eocene reducing suitable habitat ranges in Europe and North America. The appearance of the first large terrestrial carnivorans, in particular the Nimravids and Amphicyonids, also likely outcompeted ox unids in the niche of ambush hunter at this time. Mongolia provided a refugia of sorts for Sarcastodon, but when conditions changed there at the end of the period, the group would succumb to extinction. I hope this has given you some insight into these unusual and neglected early carnivorous mammals, the first to inhabit big cat-like niches. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll be back soon with a cryptozoology related video on the Oran Pendek in two weeks time. So I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.